NVIDIA ramps up its venture capital ambitions. NVIDIA is as rich as Midas, but can it turn everything it touches into gold like the mythological Greek king? Welcome to our channel. If you're here for the tech update, then click the like button and subscribe for more. Flush with cash after the AI hype fest rocketed its market cap to $2.1 trillion. Good for the third largest company in the US, chip-making supernova, NVIDIA has quietly developed an ambitious venture capital unit, according to a Wall Street Journal feature published this weekend. It's a big tech rite of passage. Venture time. Tech giants have long repurposed their spoils toward watering the seeds of promising startups. NVIDIA is no different, employing a time-tested strategy of investing in young companies that exist in industries either adjacent to or dependent on its computer chips such as AI firms or drug-discovering biotech companies. The goal is a symbiotic relationship. Startups get capital and advice, while NVIDIA gets first-hand accounts of how its chips are implemented in real-world settings, as well as the much more lucrative benefit of possibly growing or creating entirely new markets for its semiconductors. The startups that succeed will grow NVIDIA as a whole, and the value of this will be way greater than the financial returns from the investment. Avram Miller, who co-founded Intel's similarly strategic VC arm in the 1990s, told the WSJ. NVIDIA realizes it is not a time for overanalyzing. On the roulette board that is VC investing, NVIDIA is placing its chips, literally and figuratively, on an increasingly wide array of companies. Last year, NVIDIA invested in about three dozen companies, per dialogic data seen by the WSJ, or around three times more than it did in 2022. The total value of its investments hit around $1.5 billion at the end of January, a massive increase from around just $300 million a year ago. Investments include $50 million in drug discovery firm Recursion Pharmaceuticals, robotic surgical assistance manufacturer Moon Surgical, and Canadian AI company Cohere. NVIDIA has also invested in the publicly traded voice recognition software company SoundHound AI, news of which triggered a nearly 70% rise in SoundHound's share price. End of an era. Still, NVIDIA's entrance into venture capital comes just as the industry's freewheeling days of hyper-techno optimism are coming to a close. In 2023, VCs invested roughly $170 billion across 15,766 deals, well down from 2022's $242 billion spread over 17,592 deals, according to a recent industry report from Eisenamper. Meanwhile, Carta, a firm that tracks and manages company share ownership and transfers, told the WSJ that 212 of the companies it tracks shuttered in 2023, the largest such figure in several years. We expect they're in startup heaven, powered by NVIDIA chips, of course. And for our next story, Klarna co-founder is loading up on shares ahead of expected IPO. Most companies keep things as buttoned up as possible ahead of a possible initial public offering. Klarna isn't one of them. The palace intrigue continues at the Swedish fintech startup, just weeks after tensions between two of the company's co-founders became a full-blown boardroom dispute that sucked in Silicon Valley venture capital Big Timber Sequoia Capital, owner of a 22% stake in Klarna. Trouble in paradise. At the heart of the matter is an age-old Silicon Valley question. How powerful should a founder be, especially one who has left the company? Klarna was co-founded by three men, including current CEO Sebastian Semyatkovsky and Victor Jacobson, who left the company in 2012. But questions about Jacobson's role in the corporate governance structure have apparently stirred the pot. As the Financial Times reported over the weekend, Semyatkovsky supports removing special voting rights for certain shareholders, read the founders, as the company plans to clean up its governance ahead of an expected New York listing this fall. Jacobson has been less vocal about the matter, but has been boosting his holdings all along. The FT reported that Jacobson has bought up shares via special purpose vehicles and may now have a stake that's even above Siematowski's 8%. Jacobson had also been actively investing in Klarna using his right of first refusal to buy up Klarna shares in the secondary market. The issue of Jacobson's influence at Klarna spilled over into infighting at Sequoia, which suddenly aborted a plan last month to try ousting Klarna's chairman Michael Moritz a Silicon Valley high flyer who just left Sequoia as a partner last summer. Careful what you wish for. Amid the governance battle is the reality of Klarna's valuation heading in the wrong direction. As a Bloomberg report noted, 
It was merely three years ago, the company was a prized Sequoia holding with a $45.6 billion valuation. In 2022, the company raised additional financing at a relatively cut rate valuation of $6.7 billion, as higher interest rates don't align well with Klarna's buy now pay later credit offering to consumers. Klarna is hoping it doesn't have to pay later for failing to clean up its own mess today. And for our next story, Google may have accidentally revealed the Pixel 8a is coming soon. The next phone we're expecting from Google is the Google Pixel 8a. And while there's been no official word in regards to the upcoming mid-ranger, we may have the next best thing from the Android bug tracker that's publicly available online. On a thread referring to battery stats via 9 to 5 Google, a Google software engineer says the feature will return for the Pixel 8a phone. It's not the grandest phone launch we've ever seen, but we'll take it as a sure sign that the successor to the Google Pixel 7a is on the way. The thread on the Android bug tracker was started because a particular screen showing additional information about battery health was added in the software and then removed. As per the thread, it's going to make a comeback with the Google Pixel 8a. Presumably, that also means we're going to get these stats, including charging cycle counts and the battery's data manufacture, on other Pixel phones too. It may then roll out to all Android devices with the introduction of Android 15 later this year. As far as pricing goes, the Pixel 7a was originally priced at $499. Expect something similar with this year's model, though there have been whispers that the cost might go up again. The Pixel 7a also cost more than the Pixel 6a. We've seen a handful of Pixel 8a leaks, and rumors so far. A benchmark spotted in August was rather underwhelming in terms of processor performance, though we're hoping the phone might have been significantly optimized since then. The handset will apparently come with a 6.1-inch screen, matching the Pixel 7a, and we've also had a sneak peek at the Pixel 8a packaging. The date for Google I.O. 2024 hasn't been set yet, but this phone may well get its unveiling there. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Your support means the world to me and helps me create more content like this for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.